Cheating has made my life way better. When I was in elementary school, what I used to do was put my hand on my forehead and just cheat off everyone's paper. It was a simple and flawless strategy. The trick is you basically just tilt your head to the side and basically rub your forehead like you're thinking when you're really just scoping for answers. Every once in a while, the teacher would say, everyone keep your eyes on your own paper. But even as a child, I'm like, bish, prove I was cheating. Now, normally, I would just do this for a few answers I wasn't sure about. But in fourth grade, we had an exam to get into the gifted and talented program. I had no idea what it was, but it sounded nice. So I'm like, oh, I gots to be cheating for this one. So I brought I one of my smart homies with a bag of Jolly Ranchers. I'm like, all you gotta do is keep your Scantron visible. And he's like, mm. Alright. This worked perfectly, and in middle school I was accepted in the program, which was by far the greatest class I've ever taken. The structure wasn't sit there and have some middle-aged woman lecture you. No, it was here's a problem, get together in groups, and figure out how to solve it, leading it to feel more like play and less like school. One of the assignments was develop an invention that would help mankind. And after a week of scribbling down terrible ideas, I was like, wait, I'll just do what got me here, and cheat. So I stole an idea from The Simpsons, where Homer develops a chair that prevents you from falling backwards. I didn't even change the idea, I literally just drew out the same sh** and had my mom make me a prototype. My teacher ended up liking the idea so much, she chose me to represent our school at an invention fair. Which meant, one, I could potentially win prizes, and two, more importantly, I get the day off of school. So I go to the fair, and it's in this beautiful, all-white high school. How did I know the demographic was white? Because it had a goddamn planetarium in it. Yeah, try finding that in the inner city. That's right, there was an entire room dedicated to looking at all the grandness of the universe right next to my first DJ. And while waiting for the judges to come around, I went to one of the shows. Which was incredible. Not because it gave me perspective, that we're all just stardust-filled meat bags given enough rationality to realize our own mortality, but because it was hilarious. You see, the presenter used a laser pointer to show different constellations and star systems, but some kid also brought a laser pointer and during the show just started circling random things, which caused the presenter to get furious. She's like, whoever's doing that, stop it right now. And I'm just dying laughing, which causes other people to start laughing, which causes the presenter to turn on the lights and cancel the show. I'm like, this day is already incredible. And knowing my classmates are stuck in school right now is only making it better. So I go back to my booth and eventually two judges come over. They ask me questions about my invention and I bullshit my brains out. I'm like, oh well, many kids get bored and lean back in their chairs, so I just thought of a way to ensure their safety, blah 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 blah. A few hours later, everyone gathers in the auditorium for awards. There were five prizes to give out and I ended up winning three of them. Two were $50 gift certificates and one was a $300 stereo system. I was so freaking happy. And not even so much from the prizes, but the fact I was standing in front of a crowd of people that were cheering me. Because remember, I'm 11 years old. Nothing Nothing special had ever happened to me by that point. And now, I'm winning three out of five prizes in an auditorium full of jealous kids. Mmm, it was tasty. The only person happier than me was my mom. She damn near lost her sh** when I told her on the phone. And being an entertainer, I made sure to build the excitement. I'm like, hey mom, so they just handed out prizes, and I won a $50 gift certificate. And she's like, oh, that's wonderful. I'm sorry, did I say a $50 gift certificate? I meant to say two. $50 gift certificates. And she's like, whoa, you won two prizes? And I'm like, wait, did I say two $50 gift certificates? I meant to say two $50 gift certificates and a $300 stereo system. And she's like, what? And the praise didn't stop there. The following day at school, my teacher is parading me around like little Steven crushed it at the invention fair. Behold his enormous brain, you dumb peasants! And I'm just waving like Miss America, like, thank you. Thank you, I was born with a gift, thank you. Every once in a while, a student would come up to me and be like, Hey, you stole that idea from The Simpsons. In which I'd reply, I'm sorry, where's your $300 stereo system? Oh, that's right. I'm gonna call you Smuckers, cause you're being ultra jelly right now. So overall, what this experience taught me is, Cheaters always prosper. It got me into a class where I could flex my creative muscles. It got me a day off of school. It got me a free comedy show. It won me prizes. It made my parent proud. And it got me what I wanted most of all, attention. So the lesson you should take from this video is, cheat in school. And it doesn't have to be the hand on the forehead strategy. It could be writing your answers on a small piece of paper, or checking your cell phone in the bathroom, or blackmailing your teacher when you find their OnlyFans. It doesn't matter so long as you're not studying. Because life doesn't reward hard work. It rewards exploiting other people's hard work. Mmm, you know what you want to do? Oh, you want to push that subscribe button. Oh, push the button. Push the button.